Welcome to the current episode where we will uh, introduce uh, placing bricks as many as we want. We can um, build our first buildings with these techniques. This is where we stopped the last time. Our Lego man can one, but we can't place bricks. So let's change this. First, we create a script called uh, Lego Logic. After double clicking it, we are in the script itself. And the first thing we do is we delete everything and we create a new class. It uh, does not inherit by mono behavior because we don't need that. It's just a static class for some logic. We need, for example, uh, to define the grid. The grid is uh, 0.2 units in x and z direction and 0.1 unit in the y direction. This means this block, for example, is in grid units, three grid units height, and two grid units um, length, and I think four grid units if the width. Next up, we add a Lego layer mask called Lego. We will come to that later. And we create a method called snap to grid. And as an input, we get a vector three and we put out a vector three. And we do this by saying input.x or the corresponding axis divided by grid x and then multiplied by grid x but in the between we round so imagine we have a y value of 0 0.18 uh, we know that it when it snaps to the grid it should be rounded to 0 0.2 so let's test it 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.1 is 1.8 then we round it and it's 2 and then we divide it again by 0 0.1 and then we will have 0 0.2 so this works correctly next script will be added to our prefab brick therefore we add uh, a brick script so this is the script and we need the awake method and the box collider so this is attached to the script so we can just get it by set uh, by get component box collider and we need the lod group so set it to uh, the brick meshes uh, we will access them later by another script but the lod group is used right now to implement something say uh, that is set material so we want to change the material of a brick whenever we would like this can be changing the color or other material properties so and then uh, we say get LODs this is a method of LOD group and it gives us an array of LODs we can iterate through this um, array and then we will receive something like renderers so every LOD has several renderers and all the renderers have uh, materials so these renderers and materials can be directly set and we set it with the material so group one LOD second group are the renderers if we go back to uh, LOD we see these are the first um, array we are iterating through three different instances and then these are the renderers so it makes sense that these have all the same materials um, so we go back and maybe use this wet material because the other one is not that nice and now we could just change the material and then we have another color that's what we need so we just grab the material copy it and uh, call this one transparent this the tr transparent one is white and has an alpha value and therefore we have to set it to transparent to really affect our lego block there we go this is what it looks like it's transparent okay we already did a lot of things but we still cannot place this bricks but this will change now so we will attach a place brick script to our character for this script we need the three events awake start and update so the first thing that we will do is uh, defining the materials for the transparent a brick and the brick that we actually place and the prefab brick with the brick script so we need already the brick script so that's simple we just place a brick here go to the materials and say transparent is transparent and we pick a color maybe red 
let's continue on awake we need the controller uh, we will need this one later so we have to define it here uh, we also define something called current brick we will come to that in a minute and uh, position okay we will come to that in that in a minute as well but first on start we will set the next brick and this will instantiate a brick so let's write the method and we will instantiate a uh, current brick from the brick prefab but this shouldn't be a brick that's actually there it should be somehow transparent so we set it transparent and the collider shouldn't be enabled uh, this is something uh, like uh, where a brick could be um, render okay as soon as we start the brick is here the transparent material does not work as expected and the reason for that is uh, we should lower the alpha channel and then it's just more transparent we can run through it because the collider is not active uh, looks fine so far but we want to move it on update and therefore we check if the current brick is set because maybe this is called too late or the current brick is destroyed so we check if this is not equal to now and then we do a rake cast uh, we start at the camera position and now we need the controller and uh, multiply the up vector uh, times 0 0.1 times the controller uh, camera distance and the reason for that is uh, if we start at the camera and we cast a ray then this uh, figure is in the ray and we can't see anything and therefore we um, start a little bit uh, more from this position and cast the ray but as soon as the camera gets closer this point should be closer to the head as well uh, so we multiply it by the camera distance the next obvious thing is direction so if you have the camera here um, then it should clearly go in the camera direction and then it hits anything and we want to get that out and uh, it doesn't matter how far away it is so if it's miles miles away we do not really care and the last parameter is the lego layer mask so we should make sure that we create this layer mask by saying uh, add layer we call the ninth layer lego because this is how we uh, named it in the lego logic and then we go back and for example uh, mark this one this one this one this one everything as lego and of course our prefab as well so this is everything we can step on and place some lego bricks on Okay, if we get this point, uh, we say, give me the position, but not the position of the hit info point. We want to snap it to the grid. And this is the place position. This is where we will place our Lego block. But maybe it intersects with something, then we have to check something. Okay, we do it uh, 10 times. We try to find a position and therefore we create an overlapping block box. Uh, at the place position so the overlap box starts with i guess the center yes and the center is the place position plus the rotation times the center of um, the collider of the current brick and then we have to pass in half the size to get the actual size it's a little bit confusing but um, it says half extends instead of its extends so we divide the collider size so basically we check the collider even though it's not enabled and um, yeah the, the rest is uh, just uh, i think the orientation which is just the orientation of the current brick and the layer mask as always is layer mask lego we check if any lego is colliding with our block next up we check if the position is okay so it start with uh, position is not okay and as soon as the collider length so the collider is a uh, array of what the collider intersects thing with a box so with a stone we want to place then it's okay and if the position is okay we will um, place a brick at this position otherwise we will place a brick at the initial position but what would would we do if this is not okay then we will just add some um, values to the y position of the uh, block and this is uh, a height of the grid so Basically what we will do is if the stone intersects with anything, for example this wall, we will just uh, place it one unit up and try it again. And if it still intersects, we go one unit up 
and then we find a free position and place it on this um, collider here. Cool, this is what it looks like. Our figure is highly confused uh, because uh, ground detection does not work anymore since we uh, changed the layer. But at least the uh, uh, plaything algorithm works and I can place my brick wherever I want. Uh, so the only thing that's missing, missing is uh, the placement via uh, click. So let's implement this by saying input.getMouseButtonDown um, and the current brick is not null and the position, position is okay. This is important because uh, maybe we couldn't find a good position so we have to check it here. And then uh, we re-enable the collider. We set the material to the brick material. Um, we uh, just remember the rotation. Set the current brick to null. Get a new brick. And set the rotation to the rotation of the last block. But first, let's uh, have a look at the result. We can place a brick, brick uh, wherever we want and it works. Perfect. One thing that is missing is to rotate the brick by 90 degrees. And this is what we can do by, for example, hitting key code E. And as soon as it we hit it, as we hit it, we should rotate the transform by 90 degrees uh, around the up vector. And this is the reason why we introduce these two lines because we want to uh, remember the rotation and set the rotation to the next brick so that we do not start with the rotation of zero every time we start with the rotation of the left brick. There we go. Let's uh, place a stone, rotate it, place it again and again and again. So here in our player we checked the distance from ground uh, with the layer one. So uh, just replace this by ledger lego logic uh, layer mask lego and we are back on track um yeah we can finally build ourselves uh, a tower that we can hop on and let it grow while we are standing on it yeah and that's it for uh, this tutorial so uh we will continue the next time by placing different bricks of different styles and changing uh, the modes between um adding and removing bricks and we will add some gameplays, uh, gameplay in the next episodes. Subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials.